Welcome to Bioenergetic Basics with me, Danny Roddy. This is going to be a practical application audio podcast where I riff on questions I've, I feel like I've, I've talked about uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And so today we're going to talk about uh, using thyroid in 2023, and I'm going to try to encapsulate as, as many of my thoughts as possible. But but also, I, I, I don't want these to be an hour long. I think I would prefer if they were 10 or 20 minutes long at max. And so we're going to try to get through as many things as possible. So, and we're going to keep it to one subject. So today, obviously, we're going to talk about th- thyroid supplementation. So, okay, number one, uh, something that I see very often is is bad brands of th- of thyroid. And so me only having used Armor and Novotyrol and WP Thyroid and Sinoplus and Sinomel, I, I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm not very confident in a lot of other brands, you know, and very frequently somebody will tell me they were using one brand and they'll switch to Sinoplus and Sinomil and they'll, they'll say it was a completely different experience. And so if somebody is having just a bad, bad time with thyroid, I'd recommend trying different brands and Sinoplus and Sinomil can be purchased from places like meds.com.mx and Armor and WP Thyroid can be purchased from in-house pharmacy.vu. I'm not associated with any of those companies. Uh, I just, uh, facilitating people getting what they need to, to feel better. But um, so brand is a big one. I would be really choosy with the brands and that's number one. Okay. Uh, number two is eating thyroid with food. So I'm actually pretty surprised how often somebody still tells me that they're eating it without food or they're um, somebody suggested to them to eat it upon waking. And so if the body only makes three or four micrograms of T3 per hour, and a person takes 10 or more uh, T3 upon waking, that, that that can cause a pretty bad stress reaction. And so I wouldn't recommend doing that. And so I think Ray was right that it's best to use thyroid with food. And uh, for what it's worth, how I do it is I eat, and then I'll take my thyroid after, I'll chew it, and I'll swallow it with the meal. And so I think that's an easy way to mitigate uh, stress occurring when starting a thyroid supplement. But, you know, uh, and we're going to go into the third here, th- the third thing here, which is some um, uh, adrenaline reactions. And so as I've been talking to more and more and more people, um, more and more people tell me they have adrenaline reactions to to small amounts of T3. And so I there's an old Merck reference I have from 1947, and they basically say uh, like the hypothyroid person has diminished sensitivity to adrenaline. And so they make it just a gigantic amount of dr- adrenaline and cortisol to get through the day. And so when a person starts getting their thyroid function up, I think it sensitizes them to their, the amount of adrenaline they're producing and it can feel pretty bad. It doesn't feel good. So the number one thing here I think is trying a very small amount of T3 or investigating rather. Uh, This could be one microgram. So that's one 25th of a Sinomel tablet. Like a person will definitely probably need a scale to do this, a milligram scale. And, uh, and, and I know somebody that took 0.5 micrograms, you know, even smaller than that, which I think is two milligrams on a, a milligram scale. And so doses vary so greatly for thyroid. And I don't even pretend to know what, what's going to happen with a person when they use something like that. Um, but even before taking thyroid, I think a person should try to approach calcium, vitamin D, vitamin K, uh, and, and, and get those, like the, the calcium is relatively easy. Like a person could use cr- chronometer and make sure they were getting 1,500 or 2,000 milligrams of calcium per day from low-fat milk or Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese or calcium a calcium carbonate supplement. Vitamin D is also very easy. It can be uh, c- consumed in an olive oil supplement. Like uh, right now, uh, March 21st, 2023, Premier Research Labs has a good uh, vitamin D and olive oil. Although every single time I look at it, it seems to be going up in price. And then I've said this a thousand times, but I think Georgie probably has the best vitamin K on the market right now, which is uh, in olive oil. But as other companies release v- vitamin K, I think those would probably be um, useful as well. Uh, I'm d- I'm just real not confident in MCT oil anymore, and I haven't been recommending that to people. So, uh, and of course, a person get, can get the vitamin D tested, and that should be around 50 or 55 nanograms per milliliter, I think is the measurement. So those all help lower adrenaline in addition to eating enough salt. But if those were not enough uh, to, to qualm the, the adrenaline response, 
I do have, I have talked to quite a few people that use progesterone for a man or a woman. Uh, and then I just talked to um, a buddy of mine who used cipriptidine to lower the stress and react better to uh, thyroid, which was pretty amazing because I, I tend to forget about cipriptidine. And so that that was really impactful on me because he was having a hell of a time taking any amount of thyroid whatsoever. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, some people just have it worse than others. If a person's been taking a drug for a long time, like an SSRI or, or something like that, or, uh, I mean, a lot of bad stuff can happen to people that cause weird reactions to, to thyroid hormone. So the fourth, I don't know which number this is actually, maybe fourth or fifth. The, the fourth thing is checking the cholesterol. And so I, I do talk to a lot of people that have their cholesterol is too low. And so thyroid turns over cholesterol into pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA. And those are the, the youth steroids that protect us from stress. And so if a person has a deficient level of cholesterol, like 120 or 130, and they start taking thyroid, they're going to feel significantly worse. And so it's, I think it's really critical to measure the cholesterol. And likewise, if your cholesterol is very high, if it's uh, 200, 250, 300, 350 or something, I, I think that makes the whole investigation into thyroid significantly easier because you have a lot of raw material to work with. And it's pretty well established in the literature that when a person takes uh, th thyroid hormone, it tends to lower the cholesterol. And the, it's funny because the, the modern doctors make it out like it's some mystery of why the cholesterol lowers, but it's um, T3 is the basic thing that turns it over into the hormones. So another question I get uh, very often, I think this is the, the fifth thing, is uh, should I take T3 or T3 and T4? And I don't really tell people what to take, <laughs> but uh, I could explain things I've experienced, things I've, I've talked to other people about, et cetera. Uh, but, I, but this T3 versus T3 and T4 question comes up pretty often. And so how I look at it is if I, if I was talking to somebody in a Zoom session or whatever, uh, I don't think anybody should do anything based on a podcast they heard or some bullshit I told them on Zoom. <laughs> I think they should obviously investigate things for them, themselves. And so I would never, um, what I'm trying to say is I would never expect somebody to commit long term to something, you know, especially if they were like trepidatious and like getting into the whole thing. And so I think T3 is usually the easier thing to start with because it's non-committal. Like a person can take T3 one day, not take it the next day, and nothing bad is going to happen to them. Whereas when a person feels confident with T3 and they're like, oh my God, this is improving my quality of life. This is, this is a game changer. My sleep is better. My pulse and temperature are higher. Uh, my life is better, et cetera. I think that's when a person can start investigating like a, a Sino plus a T3 and T4 combo. And th that is likely to make a hypothyroid person less hypothyroid for a longer period of time because that T4 has a longer half-life. So anyways, Cliff notes is to start with T3, see if a person likes it, doesn't like it. Uh, and then to, if they did like it, they can move on to a T3 and T4 combo. And the thing about T3, T4 combo, it's not, it's not really... Like thyroid is something you should take regularly. It's not like with Sinoplus, it's not a good idea to like take it one day and not take it another day. So, so again, this is the preparation, thinking about it, like putting it on your calendar, et cetera, leaving it by your nightstand or whatever. Um, like if a person's like, oh, I'm so scatterbrained, I can't do anything. Like I would not recommend for them to investigate Sinoplus or no, like Novotyrol or something like that. Cause it's just not, it's not going to serve them. I don't think. So uh, the, the last thing, is uh, so this will be the. I mean, I'm so bad at counting these. And there's a sixth thing, uh, the T3 and T4 ratio. So I, I think traditional thyroid is about a one to four ratio of T3 to T4. And Ray is kind of famous. I, I can't remember which thyroid article it is, but he suggests people do better on a one to three. And so I, I think my kind of running theory here is that the worse the person's liver function is, the probably the lower they should go on the ratio. So if a person had legit liver disease or something, they should probably do a one-to-one -one of T3 to T4. And then as, as they improve in health, they could move up to a one-to-two. Um, but And I'm sure a lot of people do fine with a one-to-three. Uh, but for, for what it's worth, there were periods of time where I, I thought uh, one-to-four was not helpful and it was giving me issues. And I've long suspected a lot of my problems were from a bad liver function after all the dumb stuff I've done over the years. So... Uh, one to three, pretty safe. One to two, even safer. One to one, absolute safest, you know? So 
Um, but but sometimes climbing up to that more T4 can uh, increase stability. So again, this is a, it takes a lot of experimentation, and uh, it's it, as time goes on and a person gets more used to taking thyroid, they'll figure it out. I think. And the the last thing I'm kind of doing this ad hoc. I think this was the seventh thing was um, I talked to. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but I talked to a, a lot of people that overdose instantaneously when they take thyroid. So uh, again, if the body makes three or four micrograms of T3 per hour, it's probably like Ray mentioned that he thought ten micrograms was probably the most anybody'd want to take with food. But I definitely wouldn't start there. Like I like we talked about earlier, I'd start at a way lower amount, like one or two micrograms. And uh, if if a person's very confident with thyroid, they know how they respond to it, they might be able to get away with 10 micrograms of T3 or 10 micrograms of T3 and four, 30 micrograms of T4. But um, uh, t- 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 less is more in, th- in thyroid world. And I, I definitely wouldn't start with those amounts. But I frequently talk to people that will take 15 micrograms or 20 micrograms of T3 at a time, and that and that's likely just to cause problems. And so it's really important to cut up the pills. Uh, I prefer using a scale and like kitchen scissors to cut them up, and I have like dishes of them. So when I break the tablets, they fall into the dishes. But you got to find a system if, if if thyroid is that important to you. If it's not, forget it. Do something else. But um, it's important for me, so I spend the extra time to utilize it every day and it's really not that hard considering i did a like a meat and water diet for two years so uh nothing else i can think of on that topic uh subscribe to the Substack. i'm going to be releasing these on there and also the telegram t.me slash danny roddy i think the Substack is danny i really appreciate you guys if you guys like these i'll do a lot more and uh if the, the audio aspect is just so I can quickly do them. If the, the barrier to me doing these is the setup, go, having to take a shower, etc. I mean, that's just not possible. <laughs> okay, guys, really appreciate you. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Uh, take care and peace out.